Now, back to the local level. Now, we directly elect our governor, our state officials, um, our city council, and our state representatives. And they make decisions that impact our lives on a daily basis. They make decisions about education funding. They make decisions about policing. They determine whether or not uh, certain policing tactics will be used. They determine whether or not a certain person will be appointed police chief and all kinds of decisions. They make decisions that impact our lives directly. And that's the reason why voting matters. You have the situation in Ferguson. This is a prime example why voting matters. African-Americans make up the majority of the population there, but you have a predominantly white city council. You have a white mayor. You have a white police chief. You have a predominantly white police force in Ferguson. They couldn't care less about black life. That's why that man, that killer, Darren Wilson, is still free today because of police policies that were implemented implemented. Now, if you had a different mayor who appointed a different police chief, then maybe Michael Brown would be alive today. And that brings me to another point. When you vote, that makes you eligible to serve on a jury. That puts you in a potential jury pool. So when cases like the George Zimmerman trial are brought to court, when cases like the potential case against Darren Wilson are brought to court, then your name, if you vote and if you register, can be among the names that are put before a, um, the court to potentially serve on a jury. But when you don't vote, you don't have that possibility of serving on a jury. You forego that opportunity. And you leave the decision up to people that don't look like us, people that don't care about us, people that couldn't care less about black people. And you end up with verdicts like the verdict in the George Zimmerman trial. You end up with verdicts like the first verdict in the first Jordan Davis trial where that killer almost got away with killing Jordan Davis. So elections matter. If you don't vote, you don't count. You can't complain about the George Zimmerman verdict if you don't vote. You can't complain about police brutality if you're not voting. Your vote determines who's going to be uh, the police chief. And that decision affects what kind of policing you have in your community. It affects what kind of police you have on a police force. So elections matter. Now, another point that the revolutionary made was a point about how policies don't change regardless of who is elected. I mean, that is just contrary to history. Elections matter. Laws like the Fair Housing Act would not have been passed if you had racist people in Congress, if you had the wrong makeup in Congress. You wouldn't have the Civil Rights Act. You wouldn't have the Voting Rights Act. You wouldn't have Title VII, which prevents employment discrimination. You wouldn't have all of these laws in place that change the makeup of this country, that changed this country, made it move from a Jim Crow society to a more inclusive and more democratic society. That wouldn't have been possible without elections. You would not have fundamental health care reform without elections. So the notion that elections don't affect policy is ridiculous. You have two different parties. You have one party that has fought against unemployment insurance. 
that has fought against Pell Grants, that has fought against all kinds of things that benefit African Americans and minorities. So don't tell me that elections don't matter. They matter. And when you don't vote, you simply empower the people that you criticize. You mentioned the banks. You mentioned the wealthy, the power elite. If the masses of the people don't vote, then that will only entrench the capitalists. It will only entrench the banks even further than they are right now. You will essentially surrender the government to the bourgeois capitalist class when you don't vote. When you don't vote. And that's part of the reason why a lot of politicians don't address issues of poverty, because many poor people do not vote. If more poor people participated in the electoral process, then the politicians would have to address the issues of poverty. Now, you mentioned that politics corrupt even good politicians. That was essentially your point. You said even if someone was progressive and they got elected, the system would change them. And there is some validity to that point. But there are also examples of politicians who have maintained their integrity, politicians who were elected despite the opposition from the banks and from Wall Street, from all the moneyed interests. You know, you have candidates like Elizabeth Warren, who has taken on Wall Street. She is a, a, a senator now. Wall Street did not want to get her, have her elected. They fought against her tooth and nail. And she is one of the strong voices for the people in the Senate. You have politicians like a brother that I went to school with, a brother that I was a part of an organization with, Raz Baraka. His record is impeccable. His commitment to black people is unquestionable. This brother is unbought and unbossed, just like Shirley Chisholm. He's a strong brother in Newark making change. So don't tell me that elections don't matter. The brother Shokwe Lumumba, who was elected and recently passed away in Mississippi, in Jackson, Mississippi, he was elected there as mayor. His record as a revolutionary is unquestionable. And his progressive reforms in Jackson, Mississippi are undeniable. So don't tell me that good politicians cannot be elected. They can if the people mobilize and organize. Laziness is not revolutionary. Sitting out an election is not smart. 